There are several kinds of uh, 3D cameras and uh, the technology behind is a little bit different. So let's talk about them one by one. So what is the technology behind the stereo vision system? Uh, as like with our eyes, uh, here is the simplified example. Here we have a real world object point and uh, our two eyes. So this is the left eye. So this is the left camera and this is the right eye, the right camera. Uh, here is the simplified model of the camera, so-called pinhole camera model, which actually the simplification of the real camera. Uh, we want to measure this distance. So this is the distance from the, our cameras to the real world object. Uh, here are the pinholes and here are the sensors. And uh, on both sensors, we uh, have different pictures. So on left sensor, this point projects here to the left of the central point of the sensor. And uh, on this uh, right camera, this point projects to the right uh, from the center of the uh, sensor. The sum of these distances uh, is called disparity. And disparity is inverse proportional to the distance from the real-world object to the uh, surface of the camera. And another thing that is very important here and that we know is D. D is actually called the baseline of the stereo system. And another important thing that we know is the focal length. So the disparity then is defined like this, focal length multiplied by baseline and divided by C. So disparity is inverse proportional to the distance. So if we want to know the distance, we can just divide the uh, multiplication of F and D by uh, the disparity. And uh, why I said that uh, all these values are important. So the disparity is very, very small. And uh, if we want a good accuracy in this formula, we need bigger baseline and uh, bigger focal distance, but it's not possible. So uh, that's why this kind of a camera has better precision than this kind of a camera. Because here the baseline is small, and here the baseline is large. Of course, it depends on the field of view of the cameras. For example, here it's much bigger than here, but still the baseline is a very important thing. The next kind of uh, 3D camera is structured light camera. For example, this one. Here uh, we have one camera and a laser projector or some light projector, it shouldn't be a laser. And another camera that just captures not the depth, but the color. So the depth acquisition here uh, works as follows. The projector emits a kind of a pattern, uh, some known pattern on the image, and the camera sees the pattern, and by the deformation of the pattern, it can recognize the distance from the camera to the point that it is shooting. Uh, if we go back to this scheme, just imagine that we replaced one eye with projector, and this part uh, stays the same. So just imagine that here we don't have a camera, but we have some kind of a projector and it emits some fringe or some pattern. For example, let it be lines. 
And we know that if the distance from the camera to the real world object is some x, uh, then the distance between these lines is, uh, I don't know, y. So if we move the object further, then the distance becomes wider. If we move the object closer, then the distance becomes less. Uh, so in this way, we can recalculate the z and get the depth. And then imagine that we don't have a plane, but we have some kind of uh, object there. Then these lines would deform like this. And by analyzing this information, I won't get into the details, but by analyzing this information of the pattern, we can get the depth for every point. So we, we can get the difference of the depth uh, at every point of the image we get. And in this way, we get the depth information using the structured light stereo system. The projector can project different kinds of patterns. Sometimes it's lines, sometimes it can be some kind of a French, I know some dots. It all depends on the vendor. And uh, sometimes it can be in infrared, sometimes it can be in visible light. It all depends on the application and the vendor. The next kind of uh, 3D vision system is so called time coding. Time coding is actually a part of structured light system, and we have an example here. So uh, this uh, sensor has a, has a camera here and a laser projector here. And it does not project a single fringe, it projects many fringes, different partners. Uh, and by knowing that every point of the image can be emitted with light or not, uh, for example, in a sequence of eight or 20 frames, we get the unique time, so-called time code of this point. And that's why we can know every point location in the image and uh, reconstruct the depth information for this point. So the next kind of uh, 3D vision system is active stereo. Actually, uh, we have many examples here. For example, this camera is active stereo. It has two eyes. Like, a, like this stereo camera and a projector in between. Uh, this little guy here is, has also the same technology. This camera has two eyes and two projectors. And this camera, for example, also has two eyes and a projector in between. So why do we actually need to combine structured light with stereo? The most important, one of the most important things in stereo vision is to recognize that this point uh, is exactly the same on left and right image. For example, uh, in the picture we can have many points that look the same. And our goal is to recognize that uh, it is the same particular point of the object on both cameras. And if the object is somehow uh, textured, for example, if there is some text on it or it has some edges or something like that, then it shouldn't be a problem for computer vision algorithms. But if we have a flat object like this, for example, imagine that it's plain and white and there are no intensity uh, variations here, it's very difficult to recognize that this point is the same on left image and right image because they will look exactly the same. And here comes our projector that projects our fringe or some pattern. And we can know that this point is exactly the same on left and right eye. And that's why all maths here works really well. The next kind of uh, cameras is time of flight cameras. Here the principle is completely different. I'll try to draw it. So uh, we have a light emitter. And the camera. I 
and an object. So the light emitter emits light, it goes to the object and reflects back. And uh, we need to know this distance. And we know the speed of light. And what this type of sensor does, it, it, actually the sensor combines both light emitter and uh, the camera combines both light emitter and the sensor, so it's one device. Time of light camera. And we want to measure the time uh, between the emission of this light and uh, the moment it comes back to the sensor uh, because the speed of light multiplied this time uh, equals to two times distance that we need to get. So we need to get this, we know this, and we measure this. And in this way, we can estimate the depth. Uh, this guy, we have an example of a camera like this here. And uh, as you can see, for, for this, you need a special, very sensitive uh, sensor inside the camera. These sensors are usually quite expensive and uh, they, are, uh, they don't have uh, big enough resolution. So the resolution is quite small. Uh, here you can see the lens with the sensor behind it and the special light meter. So this camera uh, just flashes and then counts the time uh, after which the light comes back to the sensor. And that's, this is the way we get the distance for, for every pixel of the image we get. And the next uh, type of sensor is laser range triangulation sensor. Here, the principle is uh, the same as in structured light. We have a sensor uh, with some plans and we have a laser uh, projector that project in, in case of this small guy, it projects a point. And by analyzing the deformation uh, the shift of this point on the uh, matrix of the sensor, we can uh, estimate the distance to it. So it's triangulation principle similar to the structured light. And with the line scanner uh, range sensor, the laser projects the line and we can, by deformation of this line on the sensor, we can get the distance to every point of, of this line. Uh, what's the difference, actually, between the snapshot uh, structured light camera like this and a laser profile sensor like this? In laser profile, uh, we can get much uh, higher accuracy because we can dedicate the whole sensor to measure the deformation of just a single line. So the resolution where every pixel can move is quite high and that's why we can get a very good accuracy. So accuracy here is up to tens of or hundreds of microns. And here uh, we need to estimate the depth for every point of the matrix and that's why the, our range of uh, shifts of project, projector points is much lower and we can dedicate the whole sensor space for these shifts and that's why the accuracy here is less.